Does it matter whether you are rich or poor when disaster strikes? Stay with me to find out in this next episode of our series, The Science of Disasters. Even when we know exactly what to do in the face of a hazard, a disaster can still happen because economic factors stop us acting. Tackling vulnerability might be unaffordable, or decision makers might state that tackling vulnerability is unaffordable. Investing now to reduce vulnerability can be deemed to be too expensive, even while knowing that avoiding immediate expenditure for disaster prevention then incurs future disaster-related costs, which are far greater. During the 1995 heatwave in Chicago, elderly people perished from medical conditions related to heat and humidity. The true cause of this tragic event was that indoor climate control was too expensive for them to purchase, and they did not have the means to move to a cooler place. After the event, today, Chicago offers cooling centers during times of extreme heat, as well as transport to and from these centers. But from Chicago to Shanghai, normal seasonal weather, which has happened for centuries, ends up killing thousands annually because these people do not have the options by which they can stay alive in hot, humid, or cold and windy weather. Why is it that such large segments of the population cannot provide themselves with such a basic necessity? Vulnerability by economics is more than just the fact of some family's lack of cash on hand each summer or winter. It dives into the realms of why energy suppliers might not lower prices to affordable levels for everyone, why residential buildings are not designed or retrofitted for the weather variations and trends in their location, and why those in rented accommodation are typically more fuel impoverished than owner-occupiers. Interlinked social conditions crop up from racism to inequity, as well as how much control governments should have over utilities. All topics converge on economic and governance structures that deny people the options to reduce their vulnerabilities. Poverty breeds vulnerability. Poverty limits choices on where and how we live. So we end up occupying buildings which are constructed and maintained to worse standards than those in affluent districts. Affluent people often choose to live in harm's way, for instance, by purchasing a house on a floodplain to enjoy river views and access, or perhaps purchasing a property by a volcano slopes for similar mountain amenities. But those who cannot afford to choose where they live find they have to gravitate towards locations offering them livelihoods, no matter what the hazards. Soil enriched with flood sediment or volcanic ash can be tempting to use as farmland so it brings people, infrastructure, and livelihoods into floodplains and volcanic hazard zones. This was a case with villagers around the Merapi volcano in Indonesia. They have developed their agricultural systems to use the ever-present volcanic activity there. Ash fertilizes the areas where grass grows, and hot gas emissions burn vegetation which supports fast-growing grass over slow-growing trees. The villagers collect this grass to feed the cattle that form the basis of their livelihoods. Merapi's eruptions have led to casualties at least half a dozen times over the past century. Yet the villagers' general view remains that the volcano's hazards are opportunities for them. Despite attempts at post-eruption resettlement, few have wished to move. Traditional beliefs and a sense of home contribute to reluctance to leave their land, which, due to the volcano, provides them with a level of sustenance which they do not expect would be an option for them farther away. The fundamental driver for vulnerability by economics is choice. Wealthier people control vulnerability more than poor people because having greater resources means having more options over where and how they live. Why do we let disasters happen? In our next episode, I'll be looking at why there is no such thing as a natural disaster. You may like to try out more of the fascinating series in our science channel. Find out how technology can increase your chances of survival in a disaster in our series on wearables. Could a wearable save your life? Subscribe now and watch all the videos in this series. Hit the bell button to hear about new episodes ready for download.